Now, simulators are really amazing tools for flight training if you understand one thing. I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. Hello aviators, welcome back to The Finer Points. You know, people ask me all the time, should I use a simulator to prepare for flight training or how can I best use a simulator in flight training? Now simulators are really amazing tools for flight training if you understand one thing. They are not good at teaching you how to fly the airplane. They're good at almost everything else. Situational awareness, learning avionics, communications, uh, procedural training, all of those things are amazing things to work on in a simulator. But I can tell you in one lesson if my student's been trying to fly it because it creates so many bad habits. This year at Sun and Fun, I had a chance to meet up with virtual fly simulators uh, to show you guys exactly how I recommend using a simulator. We're gonna talk about how you can use it as a procedural trainer, and we're gonna talk about how you can best use it for communication communications with a tool called Pilot Edge. First of all, if you wanted to make one single biggest impact to your flight safety, it would be adopting standard operating procedures. This is how the pros do it. This is why we teach it in our ground school app. You can even download the app, get a free trial, learn our procedures, and then cancel without paying anything. I'm telling you that because I think it's so important for you to adopt a set of standard operating procedures, uh, and there is none better than the one in our app. Also, if you're gonna be at Oshkosh next week, I'll be speaking all week. Uh, my schedule will be up at Facebook and Instagram, but a lot of what you'll hear me talk about is standard operating procedures. So why do so many pilots not know this? And why do so many pilots show up to flight lessons underprepared on this level? Beats me, but here's a way to solve that problem. Use your flight simulator as a procedural trainer. All right, aviators, I've been lucky enough to have the virtual fly simulator here in the hangar uh, for a few weeks. And I'm gonna show you how I would use a simulator. We're gonna do our best to think of this exactly like the airplane, okay? So the first thing we do when we sit down in the airplane is the engine start flow. Uh, but just make sure that after you go through the engine start, you're doing it exactly the way you do in the aircraft. You're going through your checklists um, and you're verifying the databases. Anything you do in the airplane, we're gonna do here in the simulator. Once we get the engine started, we'll go ahead and get the weather. That's something that we would normally do. Okay, and if you don't have any audio capability through something like Pilot Edge, then you'll just simulate getting the weather. You've got the weather. Now you should be flying with the same setup you have in the airplane. So wherever you put your kneeboard or your iPad, if you have a mount, try to create that environment in the simulator. Try to keep it as close as possible to the airplane. Uh, we can go ahead and do a taxi briefing here. Today uh, we're taxiing to runway 25 here at Nevada County Airport. Uh, we'll use taxiway alpha to go all the way down and there are no hot spots. Taxi briefing complete. Okay, we can talk through some of the rest of it. Okay, we would do taxi turns on the way out. We would get to the run up area. We would go through an engine run up and we would do a pre takeoff briefing. Okay, so that, before we even start going in the simulator, before we start saying, hey, we're on a 10 mile final in the clouds or whatever it is, we're using it as an opportunity to rehearse the ritual that we bring to the airplane every single time we go flying. All right, you guys, I am here at Sun and Fun. I'm with Virtual Fly Simulators in the Flying Magazine tent, and I wanted to use this Solo G1 simulator to just show you a little bit about how I would use flight simulators in training. Um, they have tremendous value, but particularly for visual pilots, there are some, some hazards, you know, things you'd want to avoid doing in the simulator, believe it or not. So here I'm going to show you exactly how I would approach it, and the key is that you think about it like it's a real airplane. <laughs> so notice that when I sit down in the simulator or the aircraft, I have it turned off. I'm not just gonna hit all the switches and turn it on like it's a desktop computer. I'm gonna imagine that when I sit down in this seat, I'm putting on my pilot mind, right? So normally when I get into an aircraft, there's a passenger briefing. I'd wanna kind of think that through, make sure that my passengers, if there were any new, you know, where the air vents were, the fire extinguisher, the exits for the aircraft. Now you might be saying, hey Jason, 
there's no fire extinguisher in the simulator, right? There's no, even, there's not even doors on the simulator. Remember, this is a tool to help you become a more proficient pilot. Is it a perfect tool? No. And if you can afford a level D simulator, go out there and get all that stuff together and it'll be exactly real. In the meantime, we have to use these tools and our imagination a little bit to create as much of a simulation of flight as possible. So remember that. That's like the mission statement, right? That's the, the whole purpose of this, to simulate the flight experience. Know all of this stuff before you go to the airplane. Be able to do your flow checks and your checklists. Do the engine start checklist until you're sick of it. Do the run up until you're sick of it. Don't spend your time working on those things while the Hobbs meter is running and while the CFI clock is running. All right, you guys, I'm here at the Flying Magazine tent with Oscar from Virtual Fly Simulators, which is the simulator that you just saw me using. If you are a flight school or, or you're even a private owner that wants to get one of these at home, we have exciting news for you because the reason we're in Flying Magazine's tent today is that you're announcing a partnership with Flying Finance. Uh, can you tell us briefly how that works? If I'm a flight school, who do I call? Absolutely. So briefly, we are here at the Flying Finance booth because if anyone wants to buy a flight simulator and doesn't want to you know, make that huge investment uh, up front, you can, you can get one of these flight simulators for a thousand or eleven hundred dollars per month. Yeah, and guys, remember, there's no maintenance on a, on a flight sim, or very, very little maintenance, right? So you're not, you know, that's why they're such good money makers. This one's approved as an AATD, and you don't have to have the full bucket full of money to get involved. Next, situational awareness is uh, something that you can develop inside of a simulator. Uh, and the best way to do that is with a tool like Pilot Edge. Now, Pilot Edge is a communications program that plugs into virtually any simulator and gives you live air traffic controllers for the regions they cover to give you radar vectors and handoffs and say all of the quirky little things that ATC says so that you can practice it and learn it in the comfort of your own home. Pilot Edge is uh, air traffic control for flight simulators. Overwhelmingly, there's never been a good solution for getting ATC within a sim. I'm on the ground, Sierra Swab 1, Papa Echo at the FBO, ready to taxi with information, Charlie. Sierra Swab 1, Papa Echo, I'm on the ground, runway 19 or taxi via Alpha. Runway 19 or taxi via Alpha, Sierra Swab 1, Papa Echo. PBM 6 day Papa Lima, left base 520. What we often do, and the, and the type of relationship we have with a lot of our flight school participants, is we have a means of communicating with the flight instructor without the student knowing. Pretend like uh, there's a disabled aircraft on the runway and they're like, you know, a quarter of a mile to landing and require them to have to go around and they'll work with us and we'll work with them through a variety of emergencies that they want to perform either our initiation or theirs to to work with the student in different scenarios all right so remember as i said at the beginning make sure you're on autopilot when you're doing all that get the situational awareness learn the avionics uh, get the practice with communications practice doing your checklists practice everything except flying the airplane, all right? I can tell you in one lesson if a student's done that, so don't be that student. Uh, hopefully I'll see you guys at Oshkosh next week. You can find my speaking schedule on Instagram, on Facebook. Also, we are running a free two-week trial during the, the course of the show, so there is a show special. Visit any of those places I just mentioned or our website for more details. Huge thanks to the patrons who make these regular videos possible. Remember, I do Friday office hours where I sit down and talk to the patrons every single Friday. If you're interested in that, you can learn more at patreon.com slash learn TFP. Please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the little alert bell so you get notified of uploads. Leave a comment if there's a video that you'd like to see us make. But most importantly, until I see you again, be safe and fly your best.